Hey, what's up guys street riders 209 welcome back to my channel so as you guys have seen the last um, my last uh, videos I have mentioned doing uh, traction bars on this truck if it wasn't on my last video it was one of my previous videos well either way uh, the day is finally here uh, I'm not gonna I might not be finishing today though but I started kind of late I overslept but um, so this is the idea um, so you guys know the traction bars help with axle wrap uh, I have figured out that the perfect spot is right in here right underneath that bracket where my airbags are so between the shock mounts and the and the u-bolts um, as far as where it they end Typically on a truck like this, extended cab Silverado, uh, I have heard that it's typically about five feet. However, I don't want them to go very much past this curve right here. You know, I feel like right in this area is possibly the best spot to mount them. So I'm gonna have to go and measure from here straight to the back and see exactly what that measurement is. Uh, I'll put. I'll put on the you know on the description I'll put the measurements of the piece that I cut as well as links for all the parts that I'm about to use all right guys so after reaching out to a few places for different things I reached out to rough stuff specialties told them what I wanted to do and they were more than kind enough to send me this kit right here let's bring this out so you guys can see these beauties I'll have links for you guys to be able to get these on the uh, video's description. Let's see what I got. Honestly, though, I feel like, well, this is something, this is some dimple guys that I'll also use. Thank you. All right. So what I got here, you know, a little bit of it, basically, everything you need for a traction uh, a traction bar setup um, you got your bushings three inch your sleeves you have your axle mounts these are for weld on applications at three inches I believe is what the measurement is as well as the front um, mounting ac uh, frame brackets It'll go welded on like just like that. Uh, you got your bar ends with all the trimmings. You know you got your misalignment spacers, uh, jam nuts, and your hind joints. These suckers are beefy. I'm talking about beefy. Um, I know that the stuff that they use these for is like overkill for the what my my application is. Uh, as you guys, if you guys don't know who Rough Stuff Specialties is, they're out of Loomis, California, uh, Sacramento area, I believe. But uh, check them out. They they have tons and tons of products on their webpage that you guys can purchase to do different, uh, you know, like welding and different applications on your own trucks. The stuff that they get into is like some hardcore rock crawling and you know off roading. Uh, you don't need to do any of that stuff to be able to use a lot of these parts and they have tons of parts for axle mounts for you know frame mounts for shock mounts for loops for, I mean it's it's they have tons of products so go check them out um, I know that building something like this I'll show you right now all right so I just pulled these out from inside I mean you can definitely build your own as you guys saw in one of my last videos I had already made these um, I made these at work I mean ultimately this would work also but it took me a bit of bit of some time to get these done um, compare them next to each other you know along with this piece you know th this would work perfect but you can by far make these on your own but for the cost that they are honestly and the labor that's involved plus material and time getting material it really is just worth it to 
just buy these already uh, previously made and bent. Um, these I had made for three inches. So you guys could tell they're slightly bigger by a quarter inch because these I think are are two and three quarters. That's what I, what I believe these to be. Um, either way, so let's get to it. Uh, they sent me a pair of uh, dimple dies for the application that I'm using. I'm going to attempt to do this. This is 12 gauge. Um, I hope it's not that hard because I have a Harbor Freight hydraulic setup that might just get the job done. You know, I'll give that a try. So I went to the store, bought some tubing. Um, that is one and a half schedule 80. I know that they, they do two inch schedule 40, but man, after, after touching that stuff and grabbing it, honestly, for rock crawlers and hardcore mountain stuff, I know that for a fact that that's what they use because they don't want anything bent, but even this, I think, for this application, might be a little bit overkill, but uh, it's nice and heavy duty. You know, it, it'll look pretty, pretty thick, which is what I'm, I was looking for. I didn't want something that's going to look real thin on the truck. I got some one-inch uh, Schedule 40. That is going to be for the bottom of the of the of the bars. I'm going to attempt to kind of like make a custom traction bar. Uh, I'll see how it, it works. You know, it's in my it's in my head. I just I gotta play with this stuff and see if the little shitty uh, tools that I have will get it done. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, grade eight bolts, four of them. That's what the, comes in the kit, um, and everything that's here. Pretty much everything. If you go straight in their website, you can actually purchase the the, the DOM tubing also. Um, or if you go on Amazon, you can purchase it without the DOM tubing. Or even on their website, you can get it without the tubing. But um, it, it, you know, it saves you a lot of hassle of having to make your stuff and and uh, putting this kit together. So let's get to it. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to tape this up against my axle. Tape this. Uh, possibly clamp this one or tape it. I'm not sure. Uh, I want to get a close to as perfect measurement from where I need to be to where I need to cut that bar you know what I mean I, I, I want it slightly under because I have a little bit of adjustment on here but let's get to it and see what happens all right guys so I just use some zip ties so you guys can see just to hold this up give me a good idea on where I want it welded um, so yeah, that's a good spot right there. It's right in the middle of both of these brackets. This bracket and that bracket. So um, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to move on to the front one. All right, guys. So I just zip tied all these brackets in place. <laughs> I might just leave them like that. That was easy. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So I put the hind joint in there. Everything's set up. I'm gonna loosen these up a little bit more though, so because I do want some adjustment. So I want to see how much thread I have in there. Yeah, see, that's plenty of thread. So I am going to put this There we go. 
probably about right there. Right there. That way I have a little bit of adjustment back and forth. Not much, but I got some. That, that should work with preload. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is measure. So now what I'm gonna do is measure from the back where the bushing should go. We get an estimated length and the actual, you know what? Let me lock this in place because I'm gonna feel safe right around there. Let me bring the tape up. I'm at 51 and a half. Fifty-one and a half is what I'm gonna cut that at, that tube. So that'll be the first thing to do. Fifty-one and a half. And I am considering I'm actually going further in in that direction, about an inch, because I'm gonna flare out the um, you know the with the uh, hole cutter. Or actually I'll probably just use the plasma, it's a lot easier. So that I could fit into the DOM tubing for the sleeve. So let's let's cut that out. Fifty-one and a half. Alright guys, so what I've done so far, I put the bushings together, put some grease in there so that it'd be easy to pull back out. I'm just going to set it in there and uh, prop it. I want to make sure that, that that bar that I just cut is the exact length that I need. So let's put the bolt in there. There it is. Bolt is set. Also, one thing that's probably good to do is tack it while it's up here, because you know how it has uh, the um, the notch right there. So that looks perfect right there. Let me back up the camera and see how it looks in the back. Okay. So let's see. This should match up. I just push the whole thing back right now. That looks good though. So right there, let me bring the thing back in. Right there. Perfect. So that's exactly how it's going to sit. Let me see if I can, if it'll stay. Yeah, it'll stay. So it's just held up by those zip ties and gravity right now. So 
it's the lights kind of gone but let me get a back view of it and see how it looks from behind here yeah see that looks perfect right there that's a perfect size bar too i think a two inch honestly would have been a little bit thicker that one is, is bigger than the one i have in the front so that looks oh that looks awesome right right where it's at all right guys so what i'm doing here is um i'm using this t bar right here this t square to make sure i get this pretty much at a 90 degree so what i'm doing is i'm putting the the bushing flush up against this wall right here make sure it's centered on both sides and then i'm eyeballing this line all the way through that it's even and right there where it's at it seems perfect so i'm going to go ahead and tack let me center this a little bit better right there Let me flip it over and get one tack on the other side at least. Alright. There we go. Now I'm not going to weld these until everything is completely mounted. You know, the same for the brackets on the axle and the brackets on the frame. I'm going to tack everything in place until everything is mounted and I got my measurements in and I can tell that everything's fine. Then I'm going to give it a final push on the welder. Basically, you just stuff this this uh, sleeve in there and tack that in place. So let me go ahead and tack this right now. All right, guys. So, so you guys saw, I mounted the stuff up with some uh, zip ties, um, cut the the tubes. The grinding is really what takes the most time. If you don't have a notcher, I don't have a proper notcher, and I know it would take me forever doing it by hand with a drill. So I decided to go with the plasma and just grinding. It's just easier. Uh, you you do, you would want to make sure that when you're doing something like that, you don't overcut, undercut, and then just take your time. You know grinding it, it ultimately you'll be happier because if you overcut you can easily screw that piece up and then you have to notch it even more and and you know and go back and ultimately you might even have to go get another piece so always just be careful with some, doing something like that um so what i did already is disconnected the battery uh as you guys could tell it's already getting dark you know the time change got me tripping because i have no time of sunlight out here but uh, what I'm going to be doing right now is removing the, the, the bracket on the left side that goes into the rear brakes and, and dropping the cable under just so I can 
grind and um, and use the the wire brush on the axle on both sides uh, I'll be grinding underneath the, the frame where the mount is gonna go all right guys so I got all my areas grinded down that's the passenger side got the passenger side axle <clears throat> The other side, the driver's side, and the driver's side frame. Alright guys, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is welding these uh, braces in place. And at first you just want to tack them. You don't want to just weld one whole side because then it'll warp. So tack, 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 and then you can weld. Um, once that's done, well, maybe I should weld this piece too. Alright, so it's just real easy. Now it's pretty much boxed all the way around, so um, just uh, let it cool down and move on to the next one. nice and done uh, I'll probably just go over them really lightly with the with the um, grinder I'm not sure but I mean if, if you take your time on the welds you know what I mean you don't really have to even really touch them you can just leave it like that but um, yeah let me let me wait for them to cool down and then I'll touch them up real quick with the grinder all right guys so I just handed them real lightly they're done I, I cleaned it up to where you know depending on whether I put this on the right or the left I don't want I don't want you know I want this to look clean so there they are nothing to it all right so now we can tack these on the frame uh, where I marked them all right guys so I'm using two jack stands so you guys can see the one in the back is holding that back one. This one is holding the top one. And I pretty much have the uh, the the brace right where I want it. It's got to fold this up. I'm going to touch it because it's kind of hot. But um, just make sure you disconnect the battery. I just did that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and tack this. Not where it's at. I got to lift that up. But I'll tack that right there. Uh, and then I'll lift that up. And I'll tack it. One thing to do before, I, I figured I'd mention, in case you cut these off by uh, a hair, just before you tack this in place on both sides, always align these using a bolt through both of them on one side and then align the, the, the center of the holes on, on these, on the heim joints, because you have the adjustability on this side. So, you know, tilt, uh, turn, whichever one you need to go. These, for instance, were off by just over a sixteenth of an inch on here, so I needed to go uh, 
two turns on one of them to make them perfectly even. That way when you tack these brackets in place, they're exactly in the same spot. So, um, you know, you wouldn't want this one at 52 and a quarter and the other one at 52 and a half. You know what I'm saying? It's you, technically, you'd be off by a quarter inch. So, just make sure you align these first. That way these brackets and those back brackets are always in the same spot on both sides. All right, guys. Well, I just got done explaining all a bunch of stuff, and then I come in to uh, find out I wasn't recording. So I'll show you on the other side. But um, just to show you right now, I just got this side tacked up, holding these bars up with uh, some jack stands. So um, it's a lot easier. It's like an extra hands, extra set of hands. Um, so yeah, this is set. The back, I'm not gonna. Um, well, I guess I should set it right now. So let me tack the back up real quick. Alright guys, so as I had thought I was mentioning on the other side, I have the bar held up with some jack stands. These are great for helping you hold this stuff in place. So what I did was, first and foremost, sorry, uh, when you are ready to set these in place, tack these brackets in place in the back ones, put your, your bars next to each other, slap a long bolt through the bottom uh, bushings that connects both of the uh, the bars and then align the holds on the on the heim joints align them to where they're perfect or next to perfect that way you weld the brackets on the exact same spots on both sides driver and, and passenger um, if you just kind of throw them on there you know you're more than likely gonna miss the the distances on on this bracket compared to that bracket might not be by much but you know, when you're dealing with something like suspension, you kind of want to be as, as, as perfect as possible. So that always helps. It, um, I was off by just over a sixteenth of an inch. So on the other side, you see like two more threads than this. You know, so just a little something to think about. Um, I, I could have took my time and, 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 you know, shaved them off and done all that. But it's such an easy fix that it's not even worth it. So... Um, the other side is already tacked up. As you guys can tell, it's held up on its own. Um, if you weld it and bolt it up, you're done. So now I'm going to do the same thing to this. I just got to measure to make sure I have them in the exact same spots, you know, this way. Um, and let me tack this up real quick. So if I weld the back side and I weld the front side, I'm pretty much done with the standard traction bars. And um, you know you could either powder coat them or paint them yourself, and you're done. Um, very easy DIY. A lot cheaper than buying a whole new set. You know you save yourselves at the minimum hundred dollars. If you like doing this stuff, it's definitely worth it. So now I'm going to proceed to building the other piece to these uh, bars. All right, guys, so this is kind of the rough idea. I just kind of sketched this up on some cardboard. But um, I'm going to attempt to bend some of that material that way and then put some sheet metal in the center with some holes. Um, we'll see how that works. I don't have a press, so I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do those dimples. But um, I have a set of, you know, a dimple die set that um, 
that was sent to me from Rough Stuff Specialties. So I'm going to give that a try. If not, I'll go to my buddy's shop and, and use his press. But that's the rough idea, you know. So I'm going to try to see if I have enough material to make that right there. Let me cut some pieces out, and then uh, I'll start on, on, on bending. All right, guys, so I just bent my first one. So you guys can see, it was actually, it's almost dead on. It's probably... I'd say as perfect as I'm gonna get it because by the time it goes over, see how it goes right out over the my markings. So then I'll just be able to notch this off with my plasma. And I gotta do one more bend in the front, but right now I'm gonna bend the other one first. So let me show you how I did that. All right, so I just measured seven inches from the edge in, seven and a quarter. I think it was seven and a quarter. So then, <clears throat> you know, I just. Crank this up real slow, let it kind of fold as it as it goes without too much extra pressure. <clears throat> it gets stuck, I've noticed, once once you um are finished, so you have to kind of hammer it out. For me, it was just one more little pit right here, right like that. That's good. Release it. Push this all the way back down. Now let's compare and see. Okay, so right there that's close enough because I'm gonna end up notching right around here. So that's close enough. Um, now what I'm gonna do is bend the front right around. Let me let me mark it that way I know exactly where. Somewhere around there. Let me mark both sides, both tubes. That would have to bend on the exact same spot. All right. I would say they're almost dead on, both of them. So let's... All right, guys. So there they are. Both parts are pretty much almost close to identical. A little bit off on, on the very tip on that corner, but I'm not gonna use that corner, so you're not, you won't even see it once I'm trimmed, when I'm some dumb trimming it. So this is pretty much gonna set. Just like that. So I'm gonna take my cutter, or my grinder, or maybe the cutting wheel, and just cut straight right here. And on that side also, straight across. And then uh, using my plasma or the grinder, I'll just kind of curve those those pieces in a little bit. Um, like I said, I don't have a tube notcher, so I got to do this by hand. But that's pretty much it right there. It's just that easy. All right, guys. So after some grinding with the cutting wheel, uh, I got both of the pieces cut up. Uh, they're fairly, they're off by about a an eighth of an inch but I'm good with that I mean these are mainly just for looks anyways so um, now I'm just gonna weld them in place and then I will proceed to um, cutting the sheet metal that goes inside there I'm not sure if I want to uh, do the full sheet I feel like that would be kind of cool but since I'm in this alley wouldn't I'm thinking of just putting a piece you know, through the center like this I'm not sure I'm gonna think real good about that um, but let me check these up real quick all right guys so you guys could tell by my mess just 
got done welding this one. This one's nice and welded all the way around. Alright guys, so out of that same cardboard that I was using to put my knees on, I uh, I ended up figuring out to cut out a piece like this. This I'll cut out of uh, sheet metal and then it'll sit there on the outside just like that and then I'll weld it in place um, I'll probably do some holes on there I'm just not sure where what size I want I don't really have that many uh, uh, you know of the nip, dimple die sets but you know if I have to cut them with the plasma cutter I will so all I did was grab this got my piece of sheet metal right here and then I kind of traced traced it like that and I used a, ru uh, uh, a ruler and a marker just to mark out both of the pieces so I'll take I'll tackle these with the plasma right now I'll cut these out and uh, I'll see how, what I do about the holes alright guys so I have um, Use some clamps and a, and, a, and a square right here to get my line. I'm ready with the plasma. Let's see. Hopefully this thing comes out looking okay. There's one. Measures 22 inches wide, center being 11. If we put one at 11, then we can go. Let's see. 11, 7, and 3. So 3, 7, and 11. That's a pretty decent. Uh, distance right there I think that looks pretty proportionate uh, alright guys so I only have uh, four four dimple dies the half, the half inch three quarter one inch and the one and a half so I'm gonna go with one and a half on this one and this one one inch on this one and this one and then a half inch on uh, three quarters on this one so let me get to that I have already marked the spots so I'm gonna drill this one first and I'm gonna drill the opposite one second all right guys so I have these uh, the markings already where I want my holes I'm not gonna be using dimple dies after all I was kind of a bummer but I don't have the right equipment to drill these holes out you know so I'm gonna have to uh, go ahead and just punch these out now I have <clears throat> now I'm gonna be using this Harbor Freight um, hydraulic punch and I happens to have five different sizes so I'm gonna go ahead and use pretty much one for each of those uh, of those markings so let me start punching those out and then uh, we should be done with that piece all right guys so using this uh, step bit I've already pretty much got four of these done um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the front one just as is because that's the exact size I was gonna punch anyways so let's get to drilling the last one. There it is. 
The reason why I went that size is because if you guys have ever used one of those hydraulic punch sets, you need to use this thing that needs to sit inside there. So this is the punch right here. So this, <clears throat> let me turn on the light so you guys can see a little bit better. So this sits, you know, uh, underneath. This comes up from, from the bottom. Just like that. And then the actual piece that cuts bolts up through the top like this. And then the hydraulic takes care of pulling this through. So let me finish those off. I'm going to do this one that size. Uh, and then these two, these three right here, uh, three different sizes. So let me do that real quick. All right, guys. So as you guys can see, they're pretty much done. I just got to finish welding these up. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that uh, right now I... I'm gonna make sure that I put them exactly where they need to go. On the okay. right, so let me ground this. So now I just gotta make sure that I put them in the exact same spot. So I'm gonna measure from inside here. 14 inches right here. That's about 14 inches. From here to here. done so now I put the bushings back on here and uh, I weld up the frame I will that tomorrow morning <laughs> 